This is part three of a four-part series on simple regression. You, re you may recall in part one we uh, looked at the problem and developed a research question, reviewed the variables, and provided an overview of what we're going to do with SPSS. And in part two, we used SPSS to generate some univariate and bivariate descriptive statistics. In part three, we're going to look at assessing assumptions, followed by interpreting and evaluating the statistical outcomes in part four. So uh, there are three assumptions that we want to look closely at, the bivariate normal distribution, equal variance, and linearity. We'll begin with a very short tutorial on uh, creating a bivariate normal distribution using the graphs graph board and notice when I highlight just one variable as opposed to two variables different choices appear we're going to select the 3d histogram and it generates a plot that looks like this ideally uh, we would like to have uh, enough data so that we could create some type of a wire frame of that normal distribution looks kind of like an anthill uh, but we only have 10 cases for these two variables. So uh, right here we have the univariate histograms for education and income. And here I've created a three-dimensional uh, bivariate histogram uh, with income along the x-axis, education along the y-axis, and the frequency counts along the z-axis. Well, it's very difficult to look at that and determine whether that appears to be a, a theoretical uh, bivariate normal distribution. So what we use is uh, some statistical information, uh, in particular the Mahanalobus distance. Now, I realize that this is probably way beyond what we're covering in the course, but I did want to give you an idea of uh, how deeply that we can go into uh, a regression analysis and uh, if you look at uh, taking some more advanced courses in statistics you're sure to cover this one. Uh, the second uh, assumption that we want to test is equal variance and basically what we're asking here is is the variability in income at one end of the distribution of education uh, equivalent to the variability in income at the other end of the distribution in education. And overall, it looks to me like that uh, they uh, average deviations in uh, the scores about this regression line uh, appear to be fairly constant over uh, various values of education. I've included uh, a, a couple of uh, blue dotted lines here just to demonstrate what unequal variance might look like, uh, some type of uh, a V pattern. So uh, there are some ways to uh, look at uh, whether a group of scores are linearly related. Uh, they could be related uh, using various other types of curves, uh, such as uh, a quadratic curve or a cubic or exponential. So this is a quick video that will show you how to uh, do a curve analysis uh, correlate, I'm sorry, regression, uh, curve estimation, and then we load the independent variable education, dependent variable income, and then uh, we're clicking uh, on some various uh, curves that we want to um, generate. And then we'll click OK. So um, uh, let me show you what uh, we're trying to get at here. Uh, if the uh, situation was that we only had income as our variable and we had no knowledge of uh, the independent variable education, then our best estimate of income would be the average value of uh, income. Uh, we are going to be concerned with a linear relationship and it's going to look uh, something like uh, this second uh, equation right here. 
um, here we have a coefficient, and we're going to get into that in, in part four. Uh, but it's basically uh, of the form uh, b1x plus c. So it, uh, you can see the quadratic cubic uh, formulas are, are very similar to the linear formula, uh, but we're just adding some exponential terms here. And then I've also provided some uh, curves for uh, the logarithmic curve, the exponential curve, and uh, a form of a nonlinear curve. Um, I asked SPSS to compute how much uh, variance is accounted for uh, by each of these curves. And also, uh, here are the parameter estimates that would be used to uh, put into uh, these equations. So, for example, if you selected a quadratic curve, uh, here is the constant uh, that you would use. And then the B1 value would go here. Um, and uh, the B2 value would uh, go here. And then we would put in our values for education and run through the math, and that would be our uh, estimated value of income using a quadratic curve. Um, a cubic curve, as you can see, accounts for a little bit more of the variability in income, and uh, an exponential curve uh, accounts for slightly uh, a little bit larger, I should say. But you can see that uh, these uh, curve formulas can be a little bit complicated. And what you're looking for in a regression analysis is uh, not only one that will account for as much variance as possible, but you also want a simple explanation. So um, that is what you would do in terms of assessing the um, uh, assumptions under simple regression. Uh, just to review, um, we looked at the bivariate normal distribution. Uh, we uh, computed a 3D bivariate histogram, and then we also looked at um, a statistical method, the Mahanalobus distance, uh, to assess uh, bivariate normality. Uh, we didn't go into how you uh, interpret that, but uh, just gave you a heads up uh, when you're going into a, another stat course. And then uh, we looked at equal variance and finally uh, linear relationships and, and the various curves that go with it. Uh, in part four, we're going to interpret the regression analysis uh, and also evaluate the statistical outcomes.